Hi, this is Sean Weaver with Six String Country. And in this lesson, we will be taking a look at the tune Amazing Grace. It's a hymn from 1779, as far as I know. And um, it's been recorded and performed, obviously, by, by a million folks under the sun. And a lot of guitar players as well. A lot of different versions of this. Chet, Chet Atkins has recorded it. You know, Tommy Emanuel, I think Pete Huttlinger has it, had a version. I know Jeff Beck, uh, speaking of some different kinds of players. Um, and I, I put this together, I, I borrowed some ideas from a bunch of my different influences we'll talk about as we get into it. But the main thing was I just wanted to take, it, take you through it with some different possibilities and also in several different keys to hopefully put something in it that is accessible and helpful to a wide range of players. So we're gonna start out in C very simply. And we're gonna then stay in C, develop it with a bit more going on the next time in C, and then modulate to uh, the key of D and, and start throwing in some new ideas and, and um, even exploring some of my different influences all throughout it and, and end up uh, finishing the thing out in the key of E where I know Chet recorded in E, I think Tommy Emanuel plays it in E, and um, so it'll give you a lot of different stuff to, to work with and different ideas of what you can do with the arrangement and with the tune and maybe even come up with an arrangement of your own. So with that in mind, um, it is in standard tuning. Nothing has changed about the guitar, just E, A, D, G, B, E. Get your guitar tuned to A440, totally standard concert pitch, and uh, we'll get into the arrangement. We're going to start out all in the key of C and we're just going to play the tune, it's only 16 bars, very simply. And I'm just going to be limiting things to three chords, C, F, and G. And there might be a suspension in here or something like an F add two or maybe I called it an add nine, I think I called it an add two. But, but for all intents and purposes, this is going to be just the very basic starting template and from here then we'll uh, build on and throw in three with the open third string and just hold down your left hand in a regular C chord position because because the melody is going to be completely out of that shape so it's going to be open third string and then the fifth string and the first string together your melody being, I'm sorry your fifth fifth string and your second string together your melody will be on the second string so just like that, I'm, I'm using pick and fingers again. Now you can, you can do this with any right hand technique that you're comfortable with and used to um, on, on stuff as it's happening, but we're gonna, um, I'll, I'll do the pick up into it. You already see that there's a lot of repetition, but there's some new stuff going on too. Okay, so what was going on in measure 17, again, I'm out of the C shape, just like before, um, and that's covering me for beat one and two. And on beat three, I'm going to the open third and first strings. But then I'm doing this triplet lick. Um, to give it now that we're set up uh, to get into the key of D, and, and we've modulated there, 
we'll just continue onward with the mechanics of playing the piece now uh, in D. And uh, some of the licks that I've thrown in here also um, kind of throughout this bundle of tunes we've been taking a look at. I mean, even like in Danny Boy where it took you through the key of D, uh, I certainly notice it, you may notice it. I mean, there are kind of repeating ideas, you know, um, have fun with the instruments. So now that we're into that, um, I'm starting out with one of those hammer on pull off licks. So it's, it's fourth string, third string, second string together for the melody on beats one and two, let that ring. And then uh, the, I'm just, the melody would just be, but I'm dressing it up. I'm going open first string, hammering onto the second fret and pulling back off. And then to the third fret of the second string. And then hammering back on to the second fret of the high E string. Okay, and underneath that I'm just holding down a bass note. I guess I'm going to the fifth string for the bass. Okay, you're going to fifth string and then the open uh, first. So I'm here, and where am I going to wind up? I'm going to need to go back to this second position on the guitar. So I'm just going to do the same lick, now it, it's down here. So I'm taking the second fret, third string, second string, slide, and then hammering on to the fourth fret, pulling off back to the second, and then back to the fourth fret of the, of the fourth string, second fret of the fourth string. And if you want to break this down, this will be like the five second version. It's major pentatonics as far as like theory. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of use for both major and minor pentatonics. Uh, so, um, and if you don't want to make this stretch chord here, and that is in your tablature. You can just do the, the bar at the second fret and get the third string, the second string, and the first string. Let's just go ahead and play the whole last section in E about where I would at a, at a performance tempo. And uh, that'll be uh, measures 65 all the way through, well, through the final bar line through uh, 89. So we'll go ahead right now and, and play that whole thing to tempo. <laughs> 